The reality is that, yes, sea levels are rising. And here is a diagram taken from the web showing some of the rates of climb that are going on and showing where the continental shelves lie. And here, by the same token, is a map of Europe showing the catastrophic rises that might happen. Have a look at, for example, Denmark, which practically does not exist. The Low Countries are gone. Eastern England and London have vanished, which some people might consider to be a good thing. <laughs> and other parts of the world are affected, many of them with exposed continental shelves. Let's go back. There is the future. Here's the remote past. This is Europe at the height of the last ice age, some 18 to 15,000 years ago. A short time by geological standards, but very much part of our world because of the lessons it teaches us. 15 to 18,000 years ago, the global sea levels were about 300 feet. That's 300 feet below modern levels. Huge ice sheets covered Scandinavia and northern England. The North Sea was dry land, a huge tract of open steppe extended from the Atlantic into Siberia, and forests were way south. This was the environment in which modern humans, Homo sapiens, the wise people, first moved into Europe, the era of the great cave art of spectacular, cold weather adapted societies. That's the baseline. What has happened since then? The answer is that the world, of course, is unimaginably different. And what I'm going to do is just take a few examples to show you. And probably the most interesting and unusual one of these is the North Sea. The North Sea, until about 25 years ago, was considered to be an ocean that hadn't changed much, except for a geologist in eastern England who announced that there had once been a sunken land below the waters of the North Sea. And in 1934, a trawler dredging for fish on the Dogger Bank in the middle of the North Sea brought up a lump of peat. And in this lump of peat, which fell on the deck, fell out this beautifully preserved bone spearhead. Fortunately, the skipper brought it back to England, and it was shown to the local archaeologists and exhibited at a local archaeological society meeting where it caused a sensation. Oddly enough, my first archaeology professor was the man who first examined it. And they realized that there were identical artifacts like this found in Denmark on the shores of the Baltic Sea and in England. And it was clear that at some point people had lived under the North Sea on what was then dry land. 